So we're going to begin now with the UCAS section of the presentation. So UCAS stands for Universities and College Admissions Service, and we'll look at the application process for 2021. So first of all, if we look at what is UCAS, we'll think of the current UCAS system was formed in 1993. So this application system is used for students to make applications to the UK. So we're talking about Northern Ireland, Scotland, England and Wales. And typically many of our students would consider the likes of Northern Ireland and Scotland because of the fees that we'll take a look at later on. So just before we begin, we'll consider who should apply to UCAS. We would encourage all of our students to look at the entry requirements for any UCAS course that they are considering. So the entry requirements within the UCAS system generally require at least four higher level Leaving Cert subjects. And for many of the courses, five higher level Leaving Cert subjects is required. So we would just make sure that students have done their research before they get to a stage of making a UCAS application. Now, just as a note, I know Mr. Hardy has already spoken about this, but any student who would like to apply to NWRC, so Northwest Regional College in Derry, that doesn't have to go through the UCAS system. That is a separate application to NWRC, so that option is still available if students decide not to apply to UCAS. So if we want to consider now, why might somebody apply? There are 380 institutions within the UCAS system. There are over 35,000 courses that students can choose from. Students can submit a UCAS application, which won't interfere with their CAO applications. So essentially that just means that students might have more offers to choose from, hopefully, whenever decisions are made from the institutions. Okay, we're going to look at now how many courses the students will apply for. So students can apply for five courses through UCAS. They don't have to add in these courses in order of preference. So this is different to CAO. In CAO, the course that you want the most has to be at the top of your CAO application. However, UCAS is different. Students will apply for five courses and these applications will be sent independently to the five universities to which they are applying. So it's important to understand applications are confidential. So if you apply to two universities, the other university won't know who else you've applied to. So it won't affect your application if you've applied to one more than one university. We would advise that students don't mention any uh, university by name in their personal statement. So say if you were applying to Queen's and you were also applying to University of Ulster, we would advise against mentioning either of those universities because this application will be sent independently to each institution. If we're looking at the cost of application now, it's £20 sterling for one choice to be added and £26 for more than one choice and up to five choices. This is then paid using a debit card or a credit card at home. We would prefer that students would do this section of the application at home so that they're not bringing in a debit or credit card to school. So looking now at the application process. As we are Irish students, the students are going to set up an individual application to UCAS. So students that have expressed an interest in applying to UCAS have already done this section at school. If for any reason your son hasn't submitted an application within the school, if they could bring it to the attention of the guides department, they'll be assisted in setting up their application. There are then a number of sections which need to be completed. So personal details about the student, their educational history. So it's important to realize the junior cert results are included here. So students need to make sure that they're inputting correct junior cert results, their employment history. So students can add in any part-time job or any employment that they have gained um, in the past, but it won't do them any disservice if they don't have a part-time job that they can add in employment history. They will then add their course choices, and their personal statement and reference. And we'll look at the personal statement and reference in more detail as we go through the slides. So we're going to look now at key dates and deadlines. So the first key date is the 15th of October, 2020. And this is the deadline for applications for medicine, dentistry, veterinary medicine, and veterinary science. Deadline for the receipt of applications to Oxford or Cambridge University is also the 15th of October. So these students have already been met and their applications have already been processed. 
The 15th of January 2021 is the deadline that most of our students are working towards. So that is the deadline for the receipt of all UCAS applications except those that had to already be in in October 15th. The other exception is art and design courses have a deadline of March 24th. So March 24th now, 2021, is the deadline for all art and design courses, except those that already specified they had to be in by January 15th. So we would encourage that students are very clear on the deadline for the applications that they're making. The 31st of March then, students will receive decisions from their chosen college or university. So this is usually the case for the applications that have been in by January 15th. So if the application date was later than that, for example, 24th of March, it might take longer for them to receive a decision from the university. By the 5th of May then, students will reply to their offers. So if a student has been successful in receiving a conditional offer from the university, they will then send their reply back to UCAS with one firm offer and one insurance offer. And we'll look at that in greater detail as we go on. Finally then, the 30th of June is the final deadline before clearing. Okay, so when we're looking at the sections involved in making your application, each applicant has six sections that they have to complete. So they start with personal details, student finance information, choices, education, employment, and their personal statement. In addition to this, a reference must be electronically attached to the student's application and the referee who will write this reference must be from within the school community. That refer referee will add in the predicted grades that the students have received from their subject teachers. So it's important that students have asked the teacher well in advance as their own personal statement is 47 lines, but also the reference the teacher is going to write for them is 47 lines. So we wanna make sure that they have ample time to do this. Okay, so we'll look now at the sections involved in making the application to UCAS. So every applicant will have six sections that they need to complete. The first section is personal details. So a lot of the students have already filled out this section but we'd be advising that they go back through and make sure that they're happy that the details that they've inputted are correct there's also the student finance section their choices their education history their employment and the personal statement so we've been going through in class how the students are going to input the answers to all of these sections the personal statement guidelines have been given in class and they've been added onto the google classroom as well the personal statement is uh, essentially it's an essay 47 lines about why the students feel they would be the correct fit for the course to which they're applying and then in addition to that the students will ask for a written reference from one of their teachers, which will be electronically attached onto their application. So what we have advised is that the students would ask for the written reference from a teacher in the school who is linked up with the area that they're applying to. So say if they're applying for a science course, they might ask their biology teacher to write them a reference. And then the referee will be the person that will be inputting their predicted grades that they will get from their subject teachers. So the students will be given a form um, for their subject teachers to add in their predicted grades. They can go around and ask for their predicted grades and then they will give that information to their referee and the referee will send that information to UCAS whenever they're uploading their reference. The university and colleges then, once they've received all of the information on the application, they will start to make their decisions. So the decisions that the students will hear back will be one of three options. They may get a conditional offer, which is the college saying that they want them provisionally and that they'll take them provided that they meet the requirements of their course in the Leaving Cert exams. The other option then is an unconditional offer. And in this case, the college is saying that they definitely want to accept the student onto their course. And then the third option is unsuccessful. So in this instance, the college is apologizing, but they're not interested in having them on the course this year. The conditional offers that are made will be based on grades that the student obtains um, or predicted grades that the student has been given by their teachers. So it's very important here that students look to see whether the grades that they need link up with the subjects that they're studying and the grades that they're capable of achieving. So for example, a course might say that they need three H2s and two H3s from the Irish Leaving Cert. So uh, generally, these grades won't change, so it's not like the CAO where the points will go up and down. The grades generally stay the same within the UCAS system, so the students will know uh, what they're aiming towards. Um, the grades might also specify that they need to have, say, a H2 in a particular subject, so it might say 
H2 and higher level maths. So if the student isn't doing that, then they'll automatically uh, be unsuccessful in their application because they haven't met the requirements. So it's just important the students have the research done there. But grades are used very much in the UCAS system along with tariff points. So sometimes it's only grades that are required and then sometimes it's only tariff points and sometimes it's a combination of both. So if we look at tariff points then, so they work independently to the CAO points, they're not the same. So example, 200 UCAS tariff points might be a requirement to get on a course from the Irish Leaving Cert. So non-academic conditions can also be um, considered like fitness tests may be required for the student to apply to the course. So universities then will use certain criteria to make their decision. So they'll be looking at the information that the student has put on their application. So they will look at the qualifications that they have to date. They will take into account their junior cert results and their predicted grades for their leaving cert. They will look at the personal statement. So this is very important that students put work into their personal statement and make sure that it adequately uh, reflects how well they would be suited to the course. So for instance, one of the popular courses like nursing is very competitive in University of Ulster. They may get 3000 applications for nursing and they will then refine that down to 1000 students and then they have 350 places on the course. So if we're looking there at the personal statement, it's very important when the students, are, when the colleges are making their decisions. They'll also look at work experience. So again, using the example of nursing, it would be an advantage to students to have some type of experience in an area of care. So it could be work experience, um, working with an elderly relative or caring for a sibling. So any experience they have should be highlighted on the personal statement. And then the college will also look at the reference that they've been given. So in order to shortlist, so say, for example, the nursing course in McGee College, students will then, after they've submitted their application, after their personal statement has been read, they may be called for interview. So that will be used then for the college to make their decisions. Portfolios will also be assessed and auditions will be um, assessed as well for courses like music. Then, in addition to that, any course which requires an admissions test will go towards whether the applicant is successful or not. An example of admissions test will be HPAT Ulster or the UK CAT, and we'll look at HPAT Ulster in more detail as we go through the slides. So once the college now has made their decision, it's up to our students to make a reply to the college to tell them which courses they're interested in. So when applicants have to have received their decisions from the colleges, they will then be asked to make a reply by a specific date and that date will be given by the college. So it's important the students know when they're expected to reply by. Reminders will be sent by UCAS. However, it is their responsibility to reply by the date that they've said. So if an applicant fails to reply by the date, the offer will be automatically declined by UCAS. So it's not like CAO. The applicants are able to hold two offers at the end of the cycle. So with CAO, you can only accept one offer. But with UCAS, you can give a firm offer. So that's the first choice. So ideally, that's number one where you would like to go if you had the option. And then your insurance offer is a backup. However, it's still a commitment to attend that course if you don't take your firm offer. So you'll be placed here if you fail to meet the conditions of the firm offer. So really, if the students were thinking about this, it wouldn't make sense to have their insurance offer with higher requirements, grade requirements than their firm offer, because if for any reason they haven't got their firm offer, the insurance offer might be eliminated then as well if they didn't meet the grade requirements. So the students must be aware that they can't swap between these offers at a later stage. So if we're looking now at what is clearing, clearing gives students the opportunity to apply for places that have not yet been filled. To be eligible for clearing, you can't be holding any offers. And if you are eligible, you'll be given a clearing number. So you can see on the picture below, Isabel has been told um, the date and she's been told her status. You do not have a place in any of your choices for now. You're now in clearing. So then they're given a clearing number and that number will be quoted them when they want to apply for a place. So the only students that can apply to clearing are students that have not been offered anything by any of the universities that they have applied to. So it's not a case that you can change your mind and apply for a new college in clearing. You can't be holding any other places.
So when we're looking now at the tariff point system, it's important to recognize that tariff points are different to CAO points. Most universities will specify the exact number of grades required, as well as the levels and subjects that they require for their course. Some will use a combination of grades and tariff points. A student would need to be doing, for many of the universities, at least five higher level subjects, as I mentioned before. Now, some of them will accept four higher level subjects. Queen's and University of Ulster are using Leaving Cert grades rather than UCAS tariff points. So if the students go on to University of Ulster and they find a course that they're interested in, if they look at those entry requirements, they will usually then see the subjects that they need and the grades that they need. It is worth noting that Junior Cert science grades are taken into account when deciding whether to offer a student a place in nursing or primary school teaching. LCVP is recognised by Ulster University, but it's not recognised by Queen's. It is important to add in any drama or music grades um, to UCAS if the students have obtained them to just kind of highlight in their application their extracurricular activities. So looking now at the UCAS tariff points for 2021, we can see there are H1 grades, so between 90 and 100 percent is 36 points. So that's very different to the CAO system. And we'll compare them to um, in a moment. H2 is 30 points, H3 is 24, H4 is 18, H5 is 12, and H6 is 9. The ordinary level subjects then, an O1 is 12 points, an O2 is 10 points, O3 is 8, and O4 is 6. So if we are comparing them then to the CAO points, you can see there's a great difference there. So getting 36 points for a H1 is very different to getting 100 points for a H1 in the CAO system. So it is really important that students take time to look through the tariff points, if the tariff points are the requirement that they need, and to make sure that they would be able to achieve enough tariff points to apply for that course. So we're going to look now at the HPAT Ulster, which was a requirement for health related courses in Northern Ireland. So the HPAT Ulster, it's an ACER test, just like HPAT Ireland. Now it is different to the HPAT Ireland test that is required for students that are applying to medicine. The test will take three hours to complete and it's used in selection for the following courses. So the HPAT Ulster is required for the Bachelor of Science Honours in Dietetics, Occupational Therapy, Physiotherapy, Podiatry, Radiography and Speech and Language Therapy. These courses are fully funded by the NHS. So the HPAT Ulster is used as an additional requirement because they're footing the bill of the students' academic um, studies. So they want to make sure that they've got the correct type of students that are doing these courses. So the HPAT Ulster will assess whether the student has the correct social skills um, and requirements for the course. All of the above courses, as well as adult nursing and mental health nursing at McGee, are fully funded by the NHS and require no fees. So students that think that they would like to do one of the six courses that I've just talked about that require the HPAT need to go onto the HPAT Ulster website and register. So registration for HPAT 2021 has opened. It will close at 5 p.m. on the 8th of January 2021. The HPAT Ulster exam then will then will be sat between the 22nd and the 23rd of January 2021 and the results will be released in late March 2021. Now due to the COVID uh, restrictions, the HPAT Ulster exam is going to be sat remotely this year. Arrangements will be made for students to sit that exam at home. So please refer to the HPAT Ulster information booklet for further information. And the website that you'll find that on is hpatulster at acer.org. Exceptions to fees now, just to reiterate that there are currently no fees related to the health science courses, so dietetics, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, podiatry, radiography, speech and language therapy, there are no fees involved here. In addition to there being no fees for the nursing courses in University of Ulster, the nurses will also receive a bursary. So that's payable to all students who obtain a nursing place in Northern Ireland. The, birth, the bursary is non-means tested, so the family income is not important here. The students get around about £5,500 per year. And that is to kind of cover the cost of things like uniforms they may need to buy, vaccinations they might need to get if they're going out on placement. So the bursary is there at the discretion of the student to use towards their studies. Nursing fees are already automatically paid. There are currently no restrictions on students from the Republic of Ireland, so students should be able to get the bursary. However, we are unsure if Brexit will make a change to this down the line. So what we would advise is that students make their application for now to make sure that they are in the race. And then we'll see later on whether they would 
If the rules change, they may wish to withdraw their application. So the cost of studying in the UK for 2021. Fees information for all universities and colleges for the UK and EU students wishing to enter the EU higher education is available on www.ucas.co.uk. So if the students go to How It All Works, click on Undergraduate, and then the section on Student Finance, and finally Undergraduate Finance, they can find out more information here. Different institutions can charge different fees for courses that have similar titles. So it's just important that for whatever courses students are interested in, they click in and find out individually what the fees are for that course. So it's important that they do their research. Students are able to apply for a tuition fee loan that they only have to repay once they have graduated and are earning a professional salary of around £21,000 sterling per year. However, they're not entitled to maintenance support within the Northern Ireland system the same way that UK students can get maintenance support. So we'll look at what the other options are for them later on. For more detail on the type of finance and financial support that's available to students, the following websites will provide the most up-to-date information. So for England, Student Finance England, Wales, Student Finance Wales, Scotland, Student Awards Agency for Scotland, and Northern Ireland, Student Finance Northern Ireland. So if we're looking at university fees, on the 9th of July 2020, the decision was made by the Scottish Government to end free university tuition for the European Union students starting in 2021 to 2022. The Scottish Government has confirmed it will meet the cost of tuition fees for the eligible undergraduate EU student students starting their degree in 2020 to 2021 for the duration of their programme. So now fees for Scottish students are approximately £1,800 and that is all we know at the minute. Um, we're awaiting clarification before we can talk more about that. So hopefully we'll get updates now in the coming months. The current UK fee situation is the maximum fees for studying in England is £9,250 per year, Wales £9,000 per year, Northern Ireland £4,275 per year, Scotland £1,800 approximate pounds per year. So this is the current information that we have and the boys will be informed if there's any changes to that that we know about. So what I mentioned before, the students won't be able to um, receive a maintenance grant from the UK. However, if they are eligible for the SUSE grant that Mr Hardy talked about in the CAO presentation, they will be able to take the maintenance portion of that grant with them. So if the student is entitled to receive a maintenance grant through SUSE, they can bring that maintenance grant with them to the UK. So currently, SUSE grants are payable to eligible Irish students in all EU countries, just the same as if they were staying in Ireland, but only for maintenance. So they cannot take their fee grant with them. They can only take the money to live on. College fees abroad are not paid. So at the minute, this is the situation currently that they can take the maintenance grant with them. We don't have confirmation that they will be able to do that in the future with Brexit. So for now, we can't say anything for sure. We're just awaiting confirmation um, in that area. So this is just a table talking about the maximum fees um, for UCAS for 2021. So to date, students have received a presentation on UCAS in guidance class in September and October. The UCAS registration afternoon was organized. So not, of, not all of our students are applying to UCAS. Therefore, we don't want to use too much class time um, centered around UCAS. A lot of students are also using it as a backup option. So what we have done is we've facilitated separate UCAS, UCAS classes in the computer room where students can set up their application. Students applying to UCAS have been given handouts on the UCAS application process and how to complete their personal statement. They have also been given predicted grade sheets, which must be completed by their relevant teachers. So some students wanted to wait until they had achieved more grades in Leaving Cert before they asked their teacher to give them a predicted grade. But they'll start doing that now in the coming weeks, going around to their subject teachers and asking them, can they give them a predicted grade for their Leaving Cert exams? They have been introduced to the websites and video tutorials which will help them to complete their personal statements. So the UCAS website has fantastic facilities on that. So any student who's feel, feeling a bit lost can go onto the UCAS website and look at their how-to guides and send an email to their guidance counsellor and arrange an appointment for additional assistance with their application. 
All of the information has also been uploaded to Google Classroom for students. So students do have guides to how to complete a personal statement and they have guides. So all of this information has already been uploaded onto their Google Classroom in the form of a handout. So students have the resources there to help them. Students have been encouraged to complete their personal statement over the midterm break. So while we are working towards the 15th of January deadline, we really would encourage that students try and get their personal statement information together as soon as possible. The personal statement can be used to inform the teacher who is writing their reference as well, um, maybe on extra, extra achievements that the students have that would make their application stand out. So really now, when the students ask the teacher to be their reference, we're hoping that they can kind of communicate clearly with them about the different achievements they have in their field of study. Um, if the student cannot find somebody to be their reference that is in the field that they're trying to apply for, they can ask their guidance teacher to write them a reference in that instance. We just kind of are of the opinion that if a student is applying for, say, sports studies, maybe their PE teacher will be in a better place to write them a reference, etc. So guidelines on how to write a reference for a student have been sent to all of the teachers who might be asked to do so. All students have been given the opportunity to avail of one-to-one -one appointments with their guidance counsellor for assistance in their UCAS applications. And just a reminder that all the students have to do is ask for help here in this instance. If there is any student who is thinking of applying for UCAS but is feeling lost in their application, they will be encouraged to get in touch with their guidance counsellor in class or send them an email and just ask for help here. So what is left for students to do, put the finishing touches onto their personal statement and upload them onto their online application. So many students would like to have a parent, a teacher or a guidance counsellor look over their personal statement for them first before they submit it. And we would advise that they get somebody to read through it before they upload it onto their application. They need to enter their five final course choices. So the course codes and campus codes will be found on the UCAS website. They need to make sure that their teachers have completed their predicted grades form, ensure that they have included their academic reference. So this is done as an electronic attachment onto their UCAS application. They have yet to pay the fee of £20 sterling if they apply for a single course or £26 sterling if they apply between two and five courses. And all of this should be done as soon as possible because we've now moved on to the CAO application and guidance class. So we're working towards the 15th of January. However, the students should get it off their minds um, as soon as possible, get their applications in. If the students want to still go on and search for a course, they go onto the UCAS website, search for undergraduate courses, and then refine by field of study location. They look through the entry requirements, look through the course content, and there's more information available on the website. So, for example, Ulster University still have their virtual open day available online. And this slide now will show you. So up at the top of the page there, they have the opportunity to relive the virtual open day. So if they click in there, they can click into any area that they're interested in applying for. And these are just now screenshots of the UCAS website. So if they go on to UCAS, in red there is highlighted um, undergraduate courses are highlighted so they click into undergraduate then they can click into how to apply so the blue arrow is pointing here at the guides and there's also video guides and a booklet here that will explain to the students how to fill out their application and here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to fill out their application and that's available on the UCAS website. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the guidance department. So the school phone number is 912143. We would encourage parents as well to like our Career Guidance and Counselling Facebook page because then you can be up to date on what the boys are doing in class, different events or deadlines that are coming up. And also please follow the school Instagram page. So St. Eunan's College underscore Career Guidance for additional um links to open days and events that are happening and deadlines. So thank you very much for your attention and please get in touch if you have any further questions uh, to ask.